gear and everything in the hospital and the operation. And I was blessed really that they got it so early that the operation wasn't as radical as it could have been. So we went through that and then there was radiotherapy. Five weeks up to say hospital every weekday, but most of the hassle was the getting there and getting yeah. home, ten minutes mm. when you go up there sort of thing, but that was hard. And I always believe in I should have said really that. You know, when, before that I was you know when you're hearing stories about people, maybe that you knew or people on TV that had uh, terminal illness and all these serious illnesses and, and then with having heard all about healing. Yeah, so I felt it happened to be I would expect to go well. You know what and you feel sorry for these people. And then when it did happen to me that right it's time you start to open this out. You know, you put your this empty action sort of thing. So so I don't think I was ever scared through the process but you just sort of thank God every day for my health and um, sort of like this is this going to turn out all right. So it's really been like that sense really where church has really reinforced you can do so much you know the church you need to meet together and hear the word and hear other people's experiences and just keep believing and never never give up the situation is never too bad that God can't come through for you. Amen.
proceeded over to Scotland and that left me nine years of speed and rough from the streets of Edinburgh. Every night, every night in the streets and every hostels and got a house of things with. Um, I lived a simple life, an evil life of destruction. Even life worldly things in life I was leading. We were nice and everything and and I was told off your back as as everything was a crafty as daily as man. Um I came back over here in two thousand and five and had lots of my life change. I was slow, I was hard, I was out of there at the beach I used from time to time and those very old man behavior problems and anger and nobody to talk to me. I was like a wee lost youngster. Tried church, tried going to church, tried coming there and tried to listen. I was difficult. There was no movement of the Spirit or anything. No movement of the Spirit of God. He changed my life. People have seen no hope in me whatsoever. They cast me as a dead and died, no future. No one for old dead jobs or anything like that there. Then all of a sudden, 2013, I started crying out to God. Many times I was a priest cell. Many times I was preaching in priest cells to get me out of that, to get me out of that. But that was the I know that was the work of God starting to in me, starting to change me. And whenever I reached out to God and the lowest depths of despair, He dramatically changed me. I don't know whether I have got much of a testimony I think I have. 2013 my wife came along daily. And I was ready to go out to start drinking again through a break up my other relationship which wasn't good for me. Everybody knew who she was and we're seeing. And uh, I was with that woman to Brisbane for seven years and the lady came along. And um, it was a night after I asked her to the church Christmas dinner. <laughs> she was second choice at all. <laughs> I was totally lost, so I was already a ticket paid for. Um, I've been with the other hour since, since 2013. Um, I don't know what to, way to describe this. God has really touched me, changed my life around. I honestly believe I'm able to set free because I'm no longer in trouble with the police, pass around taking me to court, and get me a breakfast, and me thinking I'm going to the jail. And you remember them days, pass around? <laughs> I'm no longer worried about like that. I've got a day of sickness since I changed my life around to God. Not a day of sickness. And it's a miracle that I'm standing there. I should be dead today. In the lifestyle I was leading, I was told I would see 58. Well, if it reached that stage now, I feel it's up 21. And as a real way of living, what I went through in life, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. The lifestyle I led. And um, it's totally a miracle that I'm set free and being transformed into his likeness and into his image. I don't get it right every day. I still smoke it out there, but I'm not doing things in the world I used to do. Then I used to go down gambling and bet my nurses and stuff like that there. Totally a way to go around. Today, I can show people love. And I showed a man love there yesterday, I think he showed them, because the woman made this woman down on your life. <laughs> and the other man, and it was totally embarrassed, walking up to the church floor, and I'm holding my arm, and I'm going <laughs> drunk. And I never have seen the likes of that. That's the way I used to be. Oh, the other women have done it in the streets of all me, that I would have went to the likes of heaven, and the glass store in London, where I would be there, because the women just breathe the stuff they do out here. And dear me, to get away from that is a blessing, as a miracle. 
And I just want more of those spirits there every day and then. Just to be calm and peaceful every day. I don't get it right every day. It's cross last week. I never really could get up the left. Fight my life's an association. And they weren't going to fix that. But I got it fixed. Because I had a lot of phone calls made. Mm -hmm. But I was cross over and shouting. They had a little tech in the backyard in the back of where we left are, the back of carpet, ground floor, yard, whatever they call it. I don't want to be the guy anymore. I want to become a peace with myself to set free through to the glory of Jesus. Thanks. Amen. 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 over 
yes, forever, keep transforming. But in these three weeks, then we go and I'm expecting you to do great things in my life. You know, because no area, no matter how good it is, there's always more. There's always better. You know, and it's like somebody, some man, who do you call him? Was it John Maxwell? And he said, you know, everybody has good parts of their life, you know, or strengths, okay, and then we have our weaknesses, you know, and he was saying, but suppose he's talking kind of more the business, but because he was saying, you focus on your strengths and your weaknesses, well, don't kind of, kind of enjoy it, because you want to focus on your weaknesses, okay, you don't kind of pull up. But you know, every right one, every area, the good, the bad, and the other, just come and change it, come and just help me grow, you know, and it's like, I'm trying to think of who was it. It was Dion Moody, I think, one of them boys. <laughs> Henry George, but I think it was Dion Moody. And he said, you know, the world has yet to see what God can do with one person who's totally sold out to him. You know, I mean, Todd Fike, we always talk to Todd Fike. You know, I would say he's pretty close, mm -hmm. you know, because he's just sold out for God, kind of, mm -hmm. 24 7. But you know, I think God wants lots of us. Yeah. He doesn't want just one person to go down. You know, he didn't, he came to save each individual person, but he wants everybody to be totally sold out. Okay? But Jesus came and he had the twelve, it says somewhere that there was five hundred whenever he went up into heaven, there was five hundred then to see him going. Okay? And then it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel, go and teach, make disciples. Okay, he wants the whole world, because he came and died for the whole world. Okay, for God so loved the world, you know. So it's like, never ever think that it doesn't apply to you. Never ever think you're not good enough, but you're not one of them ones. Okay, this is for everybody who wants it. Everybody who wants it. I remember in St. Kings, is it? St. Kings 4 or 5, where the city was siege, I think it was Samaria, you know, where the enemy was coming all around them, okay, and nobody could get in and out of the city, and the city was now, they'd been locked in for so long now, they were starving, they were starving, and, you know, there was no food, you know, they were eating bird dung, okay, they were horses' heads, okay, and then it got to the point where the king was out for a walk, and he met these two ladies, Okay, and they were fighting and arguing, and he says, what are you arguing about? And this is, both of the ladies had babies, and this is, we were so hungry. He says, we made an agreement yesterday that we'd be her baby, and then today, you know, yesterday, the, the woman who was talking, says, we agreed yesterday that we'd eat my baby, and then today we'd eat hers. But today she's not letting me eat her baby, and I let her eat mine yesterday. Okay, and it says that the king was so like, oh my goodness, this is crazy, this is madness, okay? And then the prophet up, Elijah, and he says, tomorrow, he says, God's going to step in and there's going to be enough food, okay? And the man that was with the king, okay, his captain, and says, that, that can never happen. In a day, it can never happen, okay? It never happened. And Elijah says, it will happen, but you're not going to have any part of it. You're not going to have any part of it. And then we read that outside to say, we were four lepers. Four lepers, okay? And it says that these four lepers were hungry. Okay, they were hungry and they were sick. They were sick. But you know what? It's their hunger. Because their hunger made them act. Their hunger made them go up and do something. Okay? And they said, you know what? We sit here and they go, we're going to have hunger. And there's no point in looking at them gates and say, because there's nothing in there. And it says, you know what? The enemy's up the road there. If we go and see the enemy, they may take pity on us and feed us, or else they'll kill us. But hey, we're going to die anyways. Okay, so they just put us out of our misery and kill us, or else they'll feed us. And this is, come on, we'll go and see. Okay. So their hunger made them get up and do something. Okay, and that's I think, if we're hungry for transformation, if we're hungry for God, it'll make us do something. But well, sometimes people say, 
I wish, wish, wish I would love to be like that person. I would like to be like that there. Oh well, <laughs> you know, and don't do anything. But you know, those four men, they got up and they went to the enemy's camp. But you know, God had gone before them. God had gone before them. And the enemy had ran during the night. God had made them hear noises. And they thought, right, somebody's coming, so they get scared. So up they got and ran. And they left everything. They left an abundance of food. They left an abundance of everything. And these four wee men got to the first tent and looked then and saw food. And I was like, oh my goodness, great. We just picked the right tent. There's nobody about. And they sneaked into the tent and sat and stuffed themselves. And then I thought, oh, this is great. And I was like, oh, it's quiet, you know? And they maybe sneaked into the next tent. And it was empty too. And all the food and everything there. And it was around, had a look around, and there was nobody in sight. But there was food everywhere. You know, and they sat there and they ate. Yeah, they ate themselves silly. Okay, and then he went in and he just lying there, because he was in my ear stuffed. Oh, that was great. <laughs> But then somebody spoke up and he says, you know what, what we're doing is not good. Because down the road there, there's a city that's starving. Down the road there, there are people who need what we have. Down the road there, people are dying. Okay, eating babies. Okay, and we're sitting here and we have all this abundance of food. And this is, you know what, we have to share what we have. We have to share. And then they're up and down and told to say, and all this here, you know. But that's it, you know, we come to a good church here, okay? And yes, we have these three weeks and all that there. But you know, we are well fed. We are well fed, you know. And there's people out there who are starving for what we have, you know. I mean, like that there, the city was here. And the enemy was just outside the walls. It was close. It was close. But because it was the enemy, they couldn't go out. But do you know what? We're not these people's enemies. We're not their enemies. These are our families. These are our friends. These are our Balaminians that lead us. Yeah. You know? So we have to say, you know what? What we're doing, keeping this all to ourselves, is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Okay, but yeah, sometimes we're just like the letters at the beginning, and to say, you know what, we could go to the enemy and see, but you say, oh, I'm scared, mm -hmm. I'm too scared. Oh no, it's too <laughs> no, you know, they're a bad bunch, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and we can sit and say, no, it's not worth the risk, it's not worth it. <coughs> My family, I laugh at me. You know, people might go and say to her, you know, about God, she's going to shut the door in my face, so she'll never speak to me again, you know, or he'll laugh at me. You know, but we just need to be bold and believe in what we have, to believe in the truth that we have. It goes, I was speaking to the children yesterday morning and sharing with them a story that Jonathan Edwards told us on Friday night down in Port Rush. And, um, well, it's a true story. Somebody told him that it was a testimony type thing about a woman with her seven year old daughter in America. They were from America because they said it was a mall. They said it was a mall, they were in a mall. <laughs> and, um, but the wee girl says to her mummy, says, Mummy, you see that lady down there? You know, and the lady was obviously in pain. I think it's she did one of these wee walkers. But um, the wee girl says to her mummy, Jesus is with that lady. Says, I see Jesus with that lady. And the mum says, all right, okay. And they want to keep going. And, um, and the mum says, no, mum, we have to go and pray for her. have to go and pray for her. She says, all right, okay. So took her down and introduced themselves to the lady. And it says, and the wee girl prayed for her. You know, and the lady was instantly healed. You know, up to the seven. You know, like, if the mum had looked down the mall, she maybe just would have seen the wee woman wear a walker. You know? But because children have an open mind, you know, I and mean, they know, they haven't, they don't want them to learn it, but it's like they haven't learned to be afraid of people, you know, and it's like they know, you know, we just need that childlikeness, 
and say, right, you know what? God says, I lay hands in the sick, but he will recover. Mm -hmm. God says he will supply all my needs. So if he tells me to go somewhere and do something, he's going to provide everything I need. Yeah. You know? And I mean, it's like, this is for whosoever. It's for everybody. So never ever discount yourself. Okay? I never ever said, oh, I wish I could. Like, we looked at the Apostle Paul there. You know? Like, Paul could have said, this is, how can I go to this city down here and tell them? You know, like, he was up in Damascus. Like, <laughs> out of Damascus. You know, he had to sneak out over the wall at night in a basket because they were trying to kill him. You know, and the thing is, when you think about it, who would want to kill them? It has to be the Christians. <laughs> you know, I mean, that was the last that was going at that point in time. But they had to let him out over there in a basket. Okay? I remember it was the other boys because they heard it change. You know, but anyways, he had to sneak and then he came back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You know, and the believers there, don't think so, don't think so, don't believe that boy. <laughs> you know, because then it says that Barnabas. <coughs> Barnabas, okay, he met him, and then he had to come and say to the rest of the disciples, he's okay, he's okay. God really has done a work of transformation in his life. He is a new creation, okay. He's not the old person he used to be. He is transformed, okay. And then he went to life, they accepted him in, you know. And that's the thing we're, we're going to have to be watch for whenever people do come into your church you know people that maybe some people know some people don't the people who don't know oh that's wonderful that's glorious that's great yeah oh. and then other people don't ah. <laughs> but you know but you know what the blood of jesus cleanses from all sin all sin you know and we have to rejoice like heaven rejoices over any person who can see him and that's where we have to be Okay? Because I tell you, God, if God is going to death, when? And he will add to this place. Okay? All sorts. All sorts are coming in. All sorts. And you know what? We always have to remember, you know, that God can transform anybody. But Jonathan Edwards, he was speaking in that version Friday night. You know, if any person be in Christ, they're a new creation. And I thought, Lord God, that is where all transformation starts. As soon as we can see it, that is the biggest transformation that will ever, ever take place in our lives. Okay? We have become a new creation. And they say that that means it's like something that has never, ever existed before. Okay? So, Marjorie, when she got saved at 12 years of age, she became a totally new person, spiritually, that has never, ever been before. Okay? Years later, when Susie gets saved, she becomes a totally, totally new person. Everybody in between. Okay, all totally new transformation. So don't say, never ever think that God can't transform. Because the fact that you receive is the biggest transformation he ever has to make in your life. Okay? Every other area is easy, if you want to say, okay? Because when he saved you, okay, he transferred you, it says in Colossians 1, he transferred you out of the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom. Okay? So he has moved you out of that kingdom into his kingdom. Okay? We now belong to him. And you know what? God doesn't do like second hand shops, charity shops. Okay? Throwing out something. Don't need this anymore, don't need that anymore, don't want this anymore, don't want that anymore. No, God doesn't do that with us. Finished with this one, finished with that one, had that long enough, no. New day, new person, no, don't want him anymore, don't need her, no. You know, no, we're saved and God is going to keep us forever. Ever, forever. You know, so it's like whenever we hear people come in and say, God's doing something new, God's wanting to take us to new places, don't think, oh. My day's over. No, I tell you, it doesn't matter what age we are, we're only getting started. Mm -hmm. We're only getting started. And you know, and God has got so much ahead for us. Mm -hmm. You know, so I tell you, be excited. 
be excited about this transformation. Okay? Because it's like I said there again, it's for improvement. Okay? But it's also for increased effectiveness. Okay, you missed that one. <laughs> it's a good one for the church and you were out the door. <laughs> you know, where it says that transformation in an organization, I know church is church, it's okay, not an organization as such, but it's, a, it's to take transformation, it's to take it to a new level of effectiveness. Okay, totally new. Okay, and that's what we want. Okay, because it's like, right, and that was the old. Okay, what's happened? What God has done thus far? We've got it, please. Thank you, Lord God, for it. But you know, He's wanting more. Yes, He's yeah. more. Okay, more. He has more, 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 more. All right, so praise God. If you want to say that, I'll just encourage everybody just to get out as much as you can. You know, I know those who have stood the ground up over the next three weeks, and um, Adley will be a real blessing to every single person. But sometimes we're all, we're all you know, I think, you know, if you think about Saul's conversion on, on the Damascus Road, that was a very, I suppose, really spectacular <laughs> conversion. Well, you know what, that, that was one case that was like that, but the majority of, of, of it is lying upon line, little by little. Mm -hmm. You know, just a constant. Mm -hmm. And even with the, um, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, it has to be a, a constant, continual transformation, because what, in my life, I know what, what wants to happen is if I'm not continually being transformed, that conformity wants to come. Where an old mindset wants to come back, even though I've been born again for a long time, the world still wants me to fit into this little little box, and, I, and it wants me to fit into a way I think of. But uh, so we have to be continually transformed, continually renew our minds, continually in God's word. As we're continually doing that, then that transformation continues to function in our lives, rather than allowing that old conformity way. I, if you can imagine a, a little egg and a little chick in this egg and it's time for this chick to hatch out. And this is what the world wants to do. You, it, it's beginning to break out so it can transform into what it's meant to be. <coughs> it pecks through, gets its head through. Well, the world comes along with its hammer and smacks it back into the, the shell again and says, oh, you, you can't come out. You're, you're only a chick and you can't come out. And then it puts the egg back together again and tries not to let it out. Then the little chick's get into the stage where it has to get out and it's trying to get out. Starts to poke its head through and feeling all courageous and brave and then the next thing the world comes smack you really a chick you can't come out. Yeah. And the world wants to try to contain that chick so that it can't grow and develop into what it wants to or needs to grow and develop. And you know what and that's the way the world uh, does and it's not even that anybody's out there in the world, you know, trying to pick on you for this but that's just the way the world has, has been um, manufactured if you like that society and the world is there to try to contain you and stop you from reaching the potential that God has for you so just in, in through this next to you which I believe it would be a, a, a great time for every single one of us just to really grow in God and the things of God so just try to get out to what you can and, and receive um, little nuggets from, from every person that's going to be a great three weeks so Lord uh, so I'm just thinking there I'm not but um but even Jesus, you know, that Jesus was the firstborn in his family. He had other brothers and sisters, the Bible says. Okay? And it says that at one point, whenever there was a festival happening down in Jerusalem, I remember they were from Lazarus and all that up in the north, and his brother says to him, you know, it says about, away down, away down to see your followers <laughs> in Jerusalem, you know, it's like making fun of him. And he goes, no, this is not my time yet. You know, and they were like making fun of him. I mean, they really didn't believe in him. You know, and I mean, that's Jesus growing up. <laughs> you know, and his family, and his, you know, the boys, the boys said, you know, his brothers said, oh yeah, you know. And then, um, but yeah, when you come into the book of Acts, okay, his brother James became one of the leaders in the church. Okay, the book of James was written by Jesus' brother James, the book of Jude. It was written by Jesus' brother Jude. You know? So because Jesus kept going with what he believed and what he knew God wanted for him, okay, it influenced even the unbelieving family. Okay? And then shortly after that, well then we see that they were transformed and then became mighty for God as well. You know? So as they always remember people are watching us, you know, and even if they may say things Okay, we just been stuff can be going on behind the scenes, okay, that we don't know about. Okay, but thank you all for coming. Okay, we'll just commit the morning to the Lord and 
Have a nice afternoon. See you back in four more. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we just thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for your word. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, God, for your wonderful love for us. And God, you know each one of us, Father. God, you know where we're all at and we're all with you. And Lord, you know those areas that maybe come to our minds. Dear God, for we love to see you work up. And Father, God, for we just have to say, Lord, I know this area of my life's not right. Dear God, help me over these weeks to let you work in that area, to work in those areas. And Father God, we just lift, Lord God, we just lift each other up to you this morning. And Father, we say, Lord God, we're not very free it. And we're not thinking, Lord God, no, it's too bad in the area, God, I shouldn't even need help in that area. But God, we just thank you, Lord God, that you just want to come wherever it is and whatever it is. And you just want to help us. So God, we just say, for these weeks, Father God, help us just to walk it all night with you. And allow you by your spirit just to come to bring healing for healing state of even in our emotions and things of the past. Lord God, so that we can let it go. And Father God, so that each one of us can just rise up. And Father God, just be the vessels, Lord God, just be the people that you want us to be. Lord God, just bless every person now, Lord God. Bless everyone the rest of the day. And Father God, just help us, Lord God, just to enjoy the day with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you all.